when it comes to choosing a material to print your parts out of. Sometimes it can be a hard decision to make, but something you need to take into consideration when choosing that material is what your part is going to be used for. If this part is something like a prototype that just needs to be neat with accurate dimensions so that you can test to see whether the part fits into the final build that you need it for before moving on to the final product, well then you want a material that is easy to print and quick to print with a very very clean finish as well. But if you're going to be using this part as a final product and it needs to sustain some sort of force without giving way, well then you would want a very strong material, sometimes something with a little bit of flex just to absorb some sudden impacts and so on as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take Wanow's PLA Plus PLA and PEG and put them to tests to see which one of these materials fits into which category the best. But with that said, let's dive into the testing. Last thing I should mention just before we start the testing, we will be doing three main tests with all of our materials. One would be a slow load strength test, the second one will be a temperature resistance test and then the third one will be a high impact or high speed impact test. The reason for choosing these three categories for testing is because that is what most materials are being used for with our product. The slow load strength test would be used for something like a gear, a carabiner, which we will be using for the testing, and other materials that are very hard and not change the shape under any pressure or added weight. The second one for the high temperature test would be for something that might generate a lot of heat or be in an environment with a lot of heat. There you would want your part not to deform due to high temperatures. The last one which is a sudden impact test is for materials that are a bit more elastic or rubbery since they can usually deform to absorb energy as well. Practical examples of prints that you might use for this is any sort of protective case or just a protective cover for a bunch of electronics. But let's jump into the slow load test. The first test is going to be a slow load strength test. For this test, I went to Thingiverse and downloaded a carabiner file, which I printed in all three of the materials at the exact same infill and size settings. What I'm going to be doing is hanging from this carabiner with as much body weight as I can before the carabiner gives way. How are we going to measure the exact weight that this carabiner could hold before breaking is by me standing on a scale and subtracting the amount of weight left over on the scale as soon as the carabiner of breaks from my original starting weight. With this we can somewhat get an estimate of how much kilos the carabiner could hold before it gives away. So we got the strength test up and going so we have the caliper tied to a bunch of strings because we couldn't find rope so hopefully this will hold my weight as well. Retake. <laughs> hey what do you want to say? What is it called? Carabiner. No, no, say carabiner, now. carabiner. The first one we're going to be testing is the just make sure the PLA carabiner. <laughs> so we have it tied to a bunch of string to the top which we estimate is going to hold my body weight if need be and we just have a towel to hold on to so I don't hurt my hands. Okay safety glasses on on the scale starting weight of around 90 kilos and I'll pull. Here we go. Wow, that flew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the rope's gone. <laughs> the rope's all the way up there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Moving on to the second one, which is going to be bed G. So we're on the scale, starting weight. 90 kilos and pull. Cool. I think that actually went earlier than PLA. Okay, final test is PLA plus. Put it through on the scale. 90 kilos and pull. Jeez. That held out way longer than the previous one. PLA Plus. I think that was stronger than it was. It was, yeah. I think it was. I think PLA was second. It even broke before PLA. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. So the results of the string test were kind of surprising to me. I have here laid out in front of me the three different calipers with PLA, PLA Plus in the middle, and then Pidgey on the side. Pidgey kind of surprised me here, but I do feel like that is a little bit of a false result. I will be reprinting the Pidgey one with, at a high temperature to see if that increases the strength of Pidgey a little bit more because 
Yeah, it, it's it's way below the other two, way below P PLA plus and PLA. PLA broke at around 51.85 kilograms on the scale, meaning that it carried around 38.15 kilograms before giving in. PLA plus ended up breaking at 45.6 kilograms on the scale, meaning that it was carrying a whopping 44.4 kilograms before giving in. Pechi's results broke at around 71.15 kilograms on the scale, meaning it only carried around 19 kilograms before giving in. I later decided to test out Kronz PG and the WANA EBS as well. After conducting a few tests, the Kronz PG averaged around 31.2 kilograms, where the EBS could hold an average of 34.1 kilogram. But yeah, that concludes the strength test. So slow load test, PLA Plus is indeed stronger than PLA. So for the temperature resistance test, I printed three different slabs of two millimeters thick in all three of the materials. We will be putting them in an oven and then turning up the heat and then seeing at what temperature their glass transition phase kicks in and basically when they fall through. So we have PET G in first and we will starting the test with PET G right now. Currently you can see the oven is just at room temperature at around 21 degrees Celsius. We're nearly at 30 degrees Celsius so far, no change in the state of the PET G. Starting to warp at around 60 degrees Celsius and fallen through at 60 degrees Celsius. Wow, just under 60 degrees Celsius, I would say. Safe bed, it dropped exactly on 60 degrees Celsius, so let's call it 60 degrees Celsius. And by the way, uh, the way that this is being tested is that there is a probe inside uh, reading the temperature as the thermistor that goes to this multimeter, uh, which you can see the screen on here. The probe is at the exact same height as what the prints themselves are, so even though it's not 100% accurate, I would say it's at least 95% accurate. But it will be consistent over all three prints, so it shouldn't matter too much. This time we are going to put in a PLA. Currently we are at just over 20 or just under 30 degrees Celsius, I have to say. And now we put it back up to about 150 and see at what point it drops through. So we're nearing 60 degrees Celsius and it is starting to warp as well. Just hit 60 degrees. Still hanging on just a bit at 64. 70 degrees and it just fell through just over seven or just over 69 degrees Celsius for PLA okay so that leaves us with one last test and that would be the PLA plus turn it to two-way and 150 degrees Celsius and here is our Multimeter as well. Okay. We just hit 60 degrees Celsius and I can see a little bit of bending already. 62, 63, 64, 65. 66, 67, and it just dropped at 67 degrees Celsius. Okay, that kind of makes the that kind of makes it a bit interesting, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so originally, I would have just recorded um, the printing of the WAN RPG, PLA, and PLA Plus, but since the results were kind of interesting to me um, and not what I expected at all. We will be adding three more prints to that test. So I'm gonna take a different roll of PEG, uh, the WANAR PEG and print with that as well. We also have WANAR ABS. Unfortunately, we do not have it in red, so it is going to be in blue, but we are going to test it with WANAR ABS as well. And lastly, Cron PEG to see whether this is a PEG thing or a WANAR PEG thing. Okay, so let us repeat the WANAR PEG test again and see if we have similar results or differing results. Currently at room temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. So let's get 
this guy on and at 150 degrees Celsius. And uh, we just wait for, wait for the results to turn up. The vol 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 4, 5, and drop. It's just 66 or 67 degrees Celsius. So it is actually a little bit different than the previous one. Previous one dropped at 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature has dropped down a bit to about 28 degrees Celsius now. So we will be testing the PLA, uh, the PLA. We will be testing the ABS now of Wanhao and see whether there's any significant difference. Seventy degrees Celsius, no changes in the ABS. I think it is starting to sag, yeah it is. Thirty-eight. Seventy-nine. Eighty degrees Celsius, eighty-one, and eighty-one degrees Celsius when ABS first drop through quite a bit higher than the others about 20 degrees Celsius higher than all three of the other materials meaning PLA, PETG and uh, PLA plus so yeah now the last one that is a different material that we will be testing is going to be the Kron's PETG so the reason for testing the Kron PETG as well is to see whether it is a brand thing and if the brands different materials have different properties as well Meaning that is every PETG of every brand the exact same or is there anything different about them? And there should be something different about them because they have their own formulas, they have their own recipes for how they create these materials. At 66 degrees Celsius, it is starting to bend a little bit in the center. Uh, we should see it start drooping and there we go so 74 75 76 77 78 and 80 degrees celsius before the cron pitchy actually ended up failing leaving it at around the same results as the wanals abs very interesting after all the temperature tests have been done, we can see that ABS is ahead with 82 degrees Celsius on average. Cron PG isn't too far behind at 80 degrees Celsius on average. The Wanal PLA, PEG and PLA Plus all came out at an average of 65 degrees Celsius before bending and falling in. This also debunks the fact that PLA Plus is more temperature resistant than PLA. At least for wear now, that is not true. For the final test, I wanted to see how much energy these materials can absorb before completely breaking or just bending. To conduct this test, I just made a little pendulum with a hammer we had in the warehouse, which I would drop from the same height each and every time, meaning that it had the same speed and same energy at the point of impact with each of the prints. The simple thing that we're going to be looking at is to see how much lower the hammer stops after it hits the print, compared to a swing of the hammer with nothing in its way. Here's a graph showing all of the different heights the hammer reached after impacting with all of the different materials. What these percentages mean is the total height that the hammer could swing compared to the unobstructed height. We can see that ABS was the material that had the least absorption, swinging a total of 70% of the way up. Wanaus PG actually comes out at second place at 43.23% of the way up, absorbing more than all ABS, PLA and PLA+. Cron PG came out victorious, only reaching 13.87% of the total way up of the unobstructed swing. 
meaning that it nearly absorbed 90% of all of the energy of the hammer at point of impact. So that concludes the testing of some of the different materials that you can use with 3D printing. The main thing I really wanted to test in this video is to see how much better or worse PLA Plus performs compared to PLA. To say the least, it is very, very similar still with a strength advantage. If you wanted to look at some other aspects that are better with the PLA Plus where now specifically, it is a really, really, really fine finish. It's very strong layer adhesion with the ease of printing at the temperatures that normal PLA can print at. It doesn't cause much stringing and it doesn't really warp even on longer prints. So depending on what you want to print, PLA Plus might just be the perfect material for you. But otherwise, all the other materials are just as good at their specific use cases. I hope that you found this video informative. I hope that you enjoyed the testing. And if you did, consider leaving a like, maybe drop a comment on saying which part of the video was your favorite and what videos you would like to see in the future. Well then, with that said, I'll see you in the next video.